said I'm going to teach you today how to paint an orchid with this man Woody um, and we're going to do use watercolors so I have um, a litherum crimson which is going to be mixed with an awful lot of water um, I have manganese violet but if you don't have this you can mix it with um, a litherum crimson or any red and ultramarine blue you get a nice purple um, I have olive green and sap green those two will be for the leaves I have opaque white to lighten things down and um, just to put a little extra bit of highlight on at the end as well and I have yellow ochre and Naples Yellow, who will be for Woody if we decide to paint him. So I'm going to be using a watercolour layering technique where we mix a lot of water and we need a thirsty brush. So we'll be painting with um, a large round, um, say eight, ten size round or larger if you want to. Um, you need a damp brush, you put it into your paint and you'll paint it, paint your petals and then you'll um, use the water, clean out your brush, dry it with a heat gun and then you'll put another layer on once it's all dry. But I'll, I'll show you that um, as we go along and hopefully we'll, um, we'll have a nice, a nice time while we're doing it. As you can see, I'm not used to technology, and in fact, I'm. Um, this was supposed to be a Facebook Live post, and uh, I'm struggling with the technology this morning. So please bear with me, and hopefully, we'll still manage to um, have some fun and paint. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the camera, so you can see. Um, where I'm painting. Let's just tighten that up, I think. I promise I will improve with my technology. So, as you can see, this is the palette that I've set up. Um, there's only a little bit of paint in for all of the colours including the Elizabeth Crimson, but as you can see, I've put a lot of water into it. So if I get my brush, I'm just going to mix this all in with the water. If you can see your paint on your brush, you haven't mixed it in all, all the way. So you want to really, really mix it into the water. Now we can test it on a piece of paper just to see what colour is going to come out. And that's actually a bit too dark for what I want. So on that basis, I'm going to put in some white and lighten it down. We're all learning here, so as we as we go through this, we will come out perfect artists at the end of it. Ha <laughs> ha! No, but we'll learn a few techniques on the way. Okay, so let's see. Oh, look, I've still got a bit of paint on my brush, so make sure it's all off and mixed in. The colour is lightening. That's a little bit better. I think if I add a bit of that colour. The good thing is when things go not right to plan is I can show you how to fix them. So if I put a bit of that colour in and then put a little bit of the wa more water in, hopefully that will lighten it down. Well, I know it will lighten it down. And you can see immediately it's lightened it. So more water allows the paper to come through and 
makes it a lot lighter. There we go. So you can, that's the effect that we're looking for for our petals of our orchid. Now, while I've got this here, I want to show you the shape of an orchid. So if you paint a nice big C on one side, you can put a little bit of a point into that there and do the same on the other side that's the two petals that go across the front the back layer of petals are point long pointed ones and they come out as a triple like that and then you have some more petals in the front but that's the basic outline of the shape of your orchid if i show you in pencil form that's the shape of your orchid now if we don't if, if you want to draw it and then paint over the top we can do that so i'll do that on one side of my paper. Let's move my palette out of the way. So on one side I'm going to draw it so that you can see how it's um, how it forms. And the other side, I'm just going to paint it without the, without the pencil. It does help you to draw it because you understand what shape you're looking for on your orchid, which will help you when you want to paint it. So if I zoom in on that a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And let's add a little bit more light to the situation. Ah, oh, that's better. However, it's also given me a lot of shadow. So if I remove my shadow problems, better off. So I'll just make this darker so that you can see the pencil mark again because uh, now the light has come onto the paper from the window and it's just making it a little bit too light for you to see. So those are the top petals and then you want your pointed ones in a triangle. And then the other parts of the uh, petals are, you get some front petals here, along with um, the interior of the orchid stamens. And that's the shape of the orchid. You have the very long um, uh, stem. See, I can't even speak this morning, um, but that has lots of other or uh, lots of other orchids onto that stem, and it attaches a bit like that. So it ma this makes it look like a bit like a um, a daffodil on the stem. So don't don't follow me all to all together. But I would just want you to draw the petals so that you can get used to what you're going to paint with your petals. doesn't matter if they're not perfect because they all face different directions and you might not see all of them. So this one might be pointed 
up a little bit. Um, it just gives you an idea of what we're going to do. I'll do another one up uh, down here so you can see. I put these ones in first. And you get the idea. Okay, so now I've drawn them there, I'm going to paint them on this side using my paper, my brush and the paint that I've already created. And I'm going to show you the layering technique. Let's move this across a bit and put my paints where I can see them. Now you're going to need a heat gun or a hairdryer, so feel free to pause this video and go and get one. Um, but I'm going to do the back petals first. So it, what you do is you fill it up, you do your petal, draw your petals in, with your paintbrush. So these are the three triangular ones. These are the back petals. You can fill it in like that so that it looks like a petal. And then once you've done that, you want to fill it all the way. Just drop in more of the color, just flood it. And then we're going to clean our brush in water. And we're going to dry it so that we have what we call a thirsty brush and then when you drop it back in here it soaks all that paint back up again you see how much it's just lifting off that paint but it leaves a stain on the paper which is what we want because flower petals are extremely delicate and sometimes when you use paint they can look very very solid and don't feel like they're so delicate so this is a really good technique for you to understand and maybe paint something that's so delicate so i'm going to do three orchids So while that one's drying a little bit, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do another one just to the side of it. It's always good to do three, at least three. It helps to put it in your mind on what, um, what you're painting. Just the once doesn't always help. It doesn't matter if it overlays with another orchid like this one. So I'm going to flood it in again with the paper, with the water, uh, paint. Just flood it in. I'm going to clean my brush. Dry my brush. And pick up that paint. I hope you can see this. It's come out very, very pale, which is what I want, but I don't know if you can see it. So I'm going to shut the curtain again and see if that, that shows up a little bit more. Let's do a third one. Let's put it up here. So I've painted it. I'm then going to flood the 
I will only go where you've put the water. So you can just flood it in there and get the stain onto the paper. Then I clean my brush and use it as a thirsty brush. And just pick up all that paint leaving the stain. So you don't want any of the fluid on the top of the paper. You can pick it all up with your brush. And let's just put one more, but I'm going to put it as um, facing down. So again, thirsty brush, let it soak up all that paint. And then although it looks dry on the paper, the paper will still be quite damp where we've painted. So this is why we need the heat gun to make it completely dry. If we don't dry it completely first, then you would run the risk of it bleeding into your petals that you've already painted. So let's just dry it. That's all nice and dry now. So then we can put the top petals on exactly the same way but they're a different shape remember so if you if i take you back to the pencil you can see that they are completely different shape they're more rounded so let's paint these on over the top Now this school kick is going to be slightly behind this one. So I'm going to flood this in first. I'll paint this one at the top. So always thinking about what's the furthest away, um, which is what I like to paint, because then you can put um, more detail in the items that are closest to you. Let's put uh, this petal here. Okay, so I've flooded those. Let's get the thirsty brush out. So always clean your brush so you're not putting more paint on there. The reason why I clean it so that you're not picking up the paint and just transferring it. So we want to have a clean brush, dry it, and then pick up the moisture. And as you can see, hopefully on your picture, you still see the petals behind that we painted. Don't worry about these little drops, they'll all add texture to your and interest to your painting. You may want to do this slightly slower with more detail, with more um with more bit more patience. I'm trying to show you fairly quickly.
each time you dry your brush. Don't try and pick it up and go somewhere else because you'll just transfer that paint. So it's always let the water soak up, dry it. Now this one's an odd shape because it's going to be facing down onto Woody, which we're going to draw in a minute. I didn't know what to call my man, my little wooden art man. So I've been very unoriginal and just called him Woody. So you might see him in a few other tutorials. Let's just pick up those little spots. And let's dry it again. So as you can probably tell, I've paused the video while I've finished doing the drying to make it quicker. You may also want to pause it so that you can get it dry before you carry on. Okay, at this point, I'm going to draw Woody in. If you picked up uh, the picture and you've, um, you've printed it out, you could also trace him if you wanted to, which is what I did earlier. I've had an, I haven't put the flowers in the same positions, but all orchids will be different. So you can be flexible. But if I wanted him to be smelling this flower, I can put him there. I'm going to draw him in. You can see him just to the side here. So my uh, my woody is going to be smelling the flower, so that's his head, his neck, and then we've got his torso. And his arm outstretched. Put the, his waist in, and then the rest of his his body, and we'll have the arm up here, picking up, reaching up for one of the flowers, remembering. Oh, I think I probably might not, might need to do this one after I've finished the rest of the painting. But I've got these two flowers petals in. Um, or I'll put him in. I'll just, let's put him in. So he's, his hand is here. Just bring him down the, pe the, pe the flower down to him. And our picture is coming along. So I'm going to now um, put the other little bits of um, let's bring it down so you can see I keep moving my paper around I will learn I promise we're all here learning together so the other parts of my petals there's some more petals across the center here just like little brackets so flood it in same technique oops Let's pick that one up straight away. So again, all how these things happen, you can just pick it up. If you pick it up quickly, it doesn't cause a problem. So I put my little brackets in for the internal petals. And then this one, I didn't do the last one because it's be in front of this, this orchid. So I will put this one in now. So just paint this petal. In at this stage this one's this flower is going to be just a little bit behind all the others because we are going from the back of what we can see to the front 
Let me just put that petal in like that. Oh, isn't it lovely when you do something and the doorbell rings? So I pause that. I'll put it back with you. I'm never going to be a professional presenter. I will just be me. Hopefully you'll have a laugh on the way. So I've got my thirsty brush again. And I'm just picking up the fluid. Again, I've got a few dots. I'll just pick those up. And let's dry that again. If you're not sure when it's dry, um, <clears throat> You can see the water glisten and when you're heating it, it just dries flat and matte. So it's nice and dry and flat and matte. There's no glisten. If you move your head to one to side, side to side, you, you would be able to see if the water, if, the, if your paint was glistening a little bit, it's still wet. So now I can put the the interior of this last flower in. Dry my brush. I know I'm repeating things, but that's the only way it goes in. And watercolour laying is a very, very repetitive technique, but it's so effective. Okay, let's try that last little bit. Now if we look back at the picture, the photo of the original, you can see we've got lots of speckles. So this is where the um, mag mag manganese violet comes in. Uh, nope, that's upside down. Oh, this is so funny. Okay, let's put it that way around. Ooh, there we go, manganese violet. So I'm going to go to a rigger brush. This is my Rosemary Shiraz rigger. It's uh, partly stable. Now when you've got a stable brush, um, I've said this before, but it takes a little bit more time for the, the water to soak into the brush to make it moist. So you just got to give it that extra bit of time. The reason for having a um, long brush, long filaments, is so that it can hold the water. Um, so instead of just using the tip of the brush, you'll soak the whole of the brush to keep your, your paint flowing. So I'm just, let's turn the palette round so you can see the, the purple I'm working with. There we go. So at the moment I'm just adding a little bit of water 
not much not much at all to my purple and then I can you see I'm twisting my brush to coat the, the hairs of the brush now if you end up with a little um, bubble on the end just twist it on the edge of the brush edge of the palette again just to clear that off so if I fold this a little bit for you and you can still see it in shot then you can use your reference photo to put your your dots in so let's have a look um, let's put some patterns in they don't seem to be very uh, symmetrical but they do seem to be uh, fill in the flower so you, as you get down to the outer layers you get these little lines on the right the very edge of the petal bring out the shape a little bit better you can skip a few like here there's lots on this side of the petal but there's not so much here so you can just put a few dots in just don't go crazy and always look at your reference photo look more more than you are painting and fill it in as you'd like. I'm just going to fill it in a few more bits here and and then I'm going to go on to another petal and slowly you'll start to see your orchid uh, blooming remembering which pet which petal is on top of the other so this time if you paint um, right close to the edges you can distinguish which one is on top but don't outline your petals just use the dots they'll look much more natural that way keep adding water if you need to okay let's put a few more petals, um, dots in here to bring this shape out. This one seems to have a, um, a, a white line in the middle. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a white line. Slowly paint our dots in. I'm finding this very therapeutic. I'm hoping you're enjoying it too. So we just carry on to another paint, another. Um, Avoid the middle. <laughs> Remember where you're, this is why you need to focus. 
you need to focus at what you're doing and where you're painting on each petal. So this flower is in front of this flower. So I can paint over this petal. And this petal is over the top of this petal. Try not to sound patronising. <clears throat> But sometimes you just get carried away and then you realise you've made an error. Remember in these middle ones, so this can take quite a while, you feel free to take a break, um, leave me a comment, please press like if you're enjoying what we're doing. Um, whether you're watching on my Facebook page, Mary DeVille Artist, or whether you're watching on my YouTube channel, Mary DeVille Artist, um, I thank you for joining me. I'll take this time while I'm doing all these little dots. To say thank you. So on other, um, this is the third video I've done for painting so far. Um, I've done um, an orangutan and last week we did a sloth. If you've not seen them please have a look, you'll find them um, Find the videos where you found this one. Please give me, uh, take photos of your work. I would love to see um, how you've managed to create, <coughs> excuse me, create your flowers, uh, your orangutans or your sloths. Please share them on the posts and I'll quite gladly comment. Um, I'd love to see who's been painting along and if you're enjoying what you're you're seeing in my techniques I would love it also I'd be very grateful if you could subscribe to my channel on my YouTube the more people I get the more chance we've got of sharing uh, to other people all these techniques and hopefully you're enjoying them Uh, I'm doing this in real time so um, you can paint along with me or you can pause it. Apologies if you feel it's going on too long um, but I, you can you have the ability to fast forward. If you don't want to be going in this sort of slowness so let's put a few more dots in There's some big dots and some smaller dots My mum used to really love orchids. So they always make me smile. You can change the colour of your orchid anytime you, uh, if you don't have these particular colours. Let's go to this one behind. Let's put a few shapes 
different shapes in here. Let's do it this way. I love the fact that God creates flowers with such detail. Every single flower is different, but they all have their own DNA, I suppose. And they're all so absolutely wonderful. If we if we just slow down, which in this time when we're isolating ourselves, we have the ability to just look at what's been created. We are always too quick to walk quickly past and we don't see the beauty that's right in front of us. We're nearly there. Really hope you're still bearing with me as we paint these orchids. some of you might have wanted to do a background once you've learned how to do this technique feel free to paint another one where you've got a background or put your background in afterwards let's uh, put the petals in for this one the little dots for this one Now this is probably the back of the flower. Now if I'm looking at um, the picture here, you can see that the back of the flower is quite uh, pale. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to experiment because I've not done this one before. And now I put the dots in. I'm just going to take a little bit of kitchen roll. And on that one flower where I want it to show as the back of the flower, I'm just going to make it a little bit paler. <clears throat> so let's put the, I'm running out of paint here. Hopefully you've got enough paint to continue what you're doing. So let's just put this petal here. And then we can go for the center of the flower.
there we are. So, um, the same colour in the background on these on these dots is really the same colour that's all, um, in detail around the centre petals. <clears throat> I'm just going to add a little bit of the alizarin crimson wash to, to change the colour slightly. And then I'm going to go over my centre flower with my rigger brush. Just to bring in my brackets. And this is more on the edging of the, of the center, center petals. And you can see I'm doing, I'm not doing dots anymore. I am actually just painting with the brush. And again, the different techniques that you're using here from the dots helps to show the different petals and make them stand out. Now this petal, this one here, I'm going to just put a little bit of, because it's the back of the petal, back of the flower, I want to show this orchid coming down like that. I'm going to give that another dry, a bit more paint out for myself. And at this point, I'm, uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of Woody's paint, which is the yellow. So I'm going to use the yellow ochre. And um, in the picture, you can just see there's little bits of yellow within the interior of the, the flower. So I'm going to put like a, a little wishbone effect and a, a dot. inside each one of my my petals and just bring down a little bit more there and because this one um, is facing woody I'm just gonna make it look like it's sticking out So I've got a little bit of the, the yellow in there and then I'm just going to go back into the purple and touch up. Oops, I need a bit more water with my purple. Take more water with it. Um, and just join up a few little lines. And that's our orchid sorted, but we do need a little bit of greenery. So let's put, go into our sap green. And as you can see, there's one stem coming up and then it's going off into different places. So it really, you're not seeing where the 
flower is actually connected to the stalk. So I'm just going to put that line down there. And I'm going to bring it back up here through this flower and back down and again let it show through here now this is fluid paint on my brush as you can see whereas down here this is dry brush technique and I don't want that so I'm just going to go back into the paint and go back over and try and have a steady hand to go over the dry brush. And then I'm going to go into my olive green. I just got I want a couple of little tones to my green and on one side of it I'm going to do the darker green. And then we've got some leaves at the bottom. So if I go away from my rigger brush and go back to my round, you can see the leaves are quite long and thin and they go behind the stalk. So I'm lifting up my brush as I get to the stalk and then coming up. I'm going to stop at Woody because he's in front of those flower, those leaves. And then there's another leaf behind it and another one up here. Coming down. I'm going to fill in with a little bit of shadow with the darker green. And it's a little bit blurred and that's what I want for this technique. because I want you to look at the flower more than the stalk. Okay, let's give that another bit of a dry <clears throat> and then we can work on Woody. Um, if you haven't drawn Woody, then I would say thank you very much for watching and um, come and join me on my next one. So I'm going to upload this video at this point and um, so people can get going and paint their flowers. Um, thank you for joining me. Please click like. I'd love for you to subscribe. Um, let's come back and show you my face and I'll talk to you properly. Here we go. See, technology at its best. <laughs> okay. Woo, there we are. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I will show how to paint Woody in another video, um, but I wanted to make sure that people could start watching this one. And um, if you don't want to carry on painting Woody because you didn't draw him, that's fine. Please show me um, your pictures, um, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you thought of this, um, whether it's a technique you'd heard of before, whether it's one that is very new to you um, and how you get on with it. Um, as, as with all techniques that I teach, they, they come in again and again and again. Um, they don't change, it's just what we paint that changes. And the more that we practice, the better that we get um, and our confidence um, shines through. When we're not confident, um, we tend to be worse at painting because we're too 
hesitant and that doesn't help us to pro provide the technique that we want to do and um, it makes us a little bit nervous in our paintings they don't come out as well as we'd like but i hope you've enjoyed this process um next uh, every monday i'm trying to do a painting for you and i will be doing some other little ones as we go along so thank you for watching and thank you for bearing with me